Welcome to another episode of Greatness Quest. I'm Trevor Crane and I'm coming at you live here in the city of Boston. It is a gorgeous day and I am excited about today's episode. We are about to meet someone who is absolutely extraordinary. Now, first things first, you have got to choose to do things that light you up and that you're passionate about. You know, thank God this morning at uh, the crack of dawn, my wife uh, took me to the airport so that I could come to Boston and take this trip. But what's really cool and what's special about that to me is today's our third wedding anniversary. And it was a couple of weeks ago I talked to my wife about taking this trip and she was 100% on board. Uh, my wife, obviously she wants to celebrate her anniversary, but she said, honey, this is important. You go out, you live your mission and your purpose and do what you're passionate about. And I gotta tell you, there's two things that I think are really important to support you in your greatness quest. And number one is that you choose to do things that light you up because this morning, getting up at 4 a.m. was no big deal because I'm so excited to go ahead and sh and do what I do every single day. And then the second thing is how awesome it is to have someone in your life that supports you 100%. So a big shout out to my wife. I love you, honey. Happy anniversary. Uh, and you know, also the fact I'm so lucky that my wife believes in this herself and chooses that everything that she does, you know, she does with 100% of her passion. And here's the other secret, is I've seen this happen time and time again with business owners, and it's hard to embrace your greatness when you hate what you do. Because it's so hard in business to actually achieve the amount of success that we want to achieve. And so, you know, if you don't have a really strong reason why to get you all excited and and, and to follow through with your idea so that you are passionate about life. I think you're wasting your time. You know, if you're not making a difference in other people's lives, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your life. You know, life is too short. If you are not, if you don't believe passionately in what you do, if it doesn't get you up in the morning and get you excited, then baby, you're in the wrong thing. You gotta find some way that it can light you up. Because if you hate what you do, if you hate your boss, if you hate your job, if you hate your business, I mean, many business owners I talk to, uh, their, their, their dream business has become their nightmare. And today you're gonna meet somebody totally awesome who has gone through so many trials and tribulations but always found a way to end up on top. And one of their secrets to success has been always choosing to do things that they're passionate about. And I can't wait to introduce you to this, this uh, person, this mystery person. You're gonna love them, and uh, I'll see you in just a few minutes. This is an exciting day. Downtown Boston, on my way into this conference. Can't wait to introduce you to my boy. Hey guys, coming at you right here in downtown Boston. That's the castle at Boston Park Plaza there in the background. And I'm gonna interview Mike Koenigs, K-O-E-N-I-G-S. That's not how it sounds, but that's how it's spelled. Right in the center over here. So that's pretty cool. And he's gonna go ahead and talk to you about like the challenges he's gone over recently and how he helps other people achieve success. So I can't wait to introduce you to him. You know, one of the things that I think is very special about him is how genuine and authentic he is. I've, I've known him for years online because I've been following him online. And right in the castle there, I've been teaching people how they can go ahead and drive traffic to their business and get more customers. So hopefully you're gonna learn some of that from Mike today. And you know, just another little piece of information about Mike. Tony Robbins actually interviewed Mike Koenigs as one of the new money masters and you're gonna find out about how many multi-million dollar launches he's done and how you can use the same strategy so you can create that same type of success for yourself. And here's what's cool. Mike has trained hundreds, literally hundreds and hundreds of people to do the same thing from every walk of life and every age group. So I'll introduce you to Mike next. All right, welcome to Greatness Quest. This is Trevor Crane and today I could be more excited to introduce you to Mike Koenigs who uh, is gonna tell you everything about uh, what makes his business phenomenal. I'm excited because I've been following him online for the last five years, maybe more, and Mike actually is a best-selling author, not once, not twice, but seven times in a row. 
what I like most is I think it's 12 consecutive multi-million dollar launches online. So thank you for being here. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. I got to go ahead. Yeah. yeah it's it's awesome nice. Ride. Here we are in beautiful Boston. Well, that's right. That's right. So Mike, if somebody looks you up online, one, a friend of mine just did this recently and what he saw was your chief disruptosaurus. Right. So. Tell me what, what that means. All right, well, um, what a disruptosaurus is, is um, I think the most important thing in order to survive and actually create a successful business is you've got to understand disruption and, and build a disruptive company, which means finding some way to make um, a marketplace or a market more efficient. For example, what Uber has done for the taxi industry is very, very disruptive. They've gone in and taken a business that's been horribly inefficient for years and years, disrupted it with a combination of technology and outsourcing, which is brilliant. Also, if you look at what Elon Musk is doing with Tesla, um, creating electric cars, but also um, opening up all the patents. So um, there's a there's so a it's big not just idea. getting attention. This is disrupt, like, like mm -hmm. the, the music industry, for example. That's right. Completely changed. Yeah, Apple really disrupted the market. You could say Napster was the original disruption right, right. for us, which gave away music. But really what, what it did is it... I hope you've enjoyed meeting Mike Koenig so far. And when you come back, you're going to learn strategies that Mike is using that you can use in your business and in your life. And when you stick through the end of our episode, I'm always going to give you something valuable, a gift that you can go ahead and use. So you want to make sure that you follow this all the way to the end and find just one little tidbit that you can use to help you in your greatness quest. Again, this is Trevor Crane. We'll see you in a minute, and I think you're going to love this next segment. People voted with their behaviors. In the case of Napster, even though what they were doing was illegal, people wanted to be able to buy music and be able to get a track they wanted. And when Apple came along and said, hey, look, most people don't want to steal, but what they want is the convenience. So when Apple rolled out 99 cents a song, people had said, I would love to buy that music and know that it's all in one place. And that's why they sold a lot of iPods, which later led to their success with iPhones as well. I believe Apple's in the process of doing that with the watch, for example. They're taking a very common device. And if you think about it, you ask most people these days, how often do you check your phone? Okay? How often do you check either your time, your messages? Most people, it turns out, check it well over 100 times a day. Yeah. So Apple is in the attention business. Amazon is the in, in the inten attention business. I believe every business needs to think of themselves as being in the attention business and be able and willing to distribute content to be seen, heard, viewed, read, listened to anytime, anywhere, any device. And so being a disruptosaurus is really embodying being in the attention business, being able to declare, I am here, I, um, I am here with you always, on everything all the time right. and every business needs to think of themselves as educating all the time everywhere I love it I love it okay so it's not just attention but there's the distinction that you gave about disrupting the status quo and yep. the examples are really finding out what the client needs like in this case yeah. you know with Napster as the example they didn't business they didn't turn it into a business that was sustainable but Apple did so talk to me about like how this disruptosaurus that, how does that show up in your successful business launches or your books or or does it or is it that just a unique thought well um, so one of my so there have been a series of books that I've written um, the first one I wrote um, the backstory was I had cancer I was it was as of the time of recording this it's almost exactly two years ago to this day in fact that I um, used my phone to write publish promote become a best-selling author with about an hour of strength a day and, um, so hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. Yeah. Because I've heard you say this before. Mm -hmm. One of the things that my heart goes out, and I'm like, I'm so great to meet you face to face, because I remember when you first shared your challenges with cancer online. And by the way, one of the things I love about Mike, and well, I love it about you, is how authentic you've been. Like, mm -hmm. I always feel you connect with me, and why I'm grateful to go ahead and share you with people that I can connect with. Mm -hmm. But you shared this as a challenge that you had. And I'm so grateful that you pulled through. So now, this concept of you were you had cancer. Mm -hmm. You just you wrote a best-selling author from uh, you wrote a best-selling book from your bed. Mm -hmm. yep. And you had one hour of energy a day. Yep. 
Yep. And so now, how did you use your phone? Yep. How did that happen? Well, what kind of the the backstory was, I had uh, I didn't know if I was going to live, and I was being treated. In this case, I was over twenty five hundred miles away from my home, from San Diego. I was at Duke, and you know, I was waking up every day in a pile of my own hair, and uh, you know, going to treatment every day, getting zapped, getting radiation, and. Uh, uh, it was then that I, I became completely obsessed with the idea of writing a book in the event that I wouldn't live, that I have something behind. But I also um, thought I could take everything I had learned over the past 12 or 15 years from about marketing and publishing because I'd worked with a lot of best-selling authors. I'd grit, created products, even created a lot of content in the books, but I hadn't written a real book. And I thought, okay, if I'm going to go out, I'm going to do this. And if I live, it'll be a great story to tell, right? Um, but also, I built a product around that book. So as I made it through the treatments and the book was done, it became the best lead generator for subs for that product. And that product ended up going on to um, not only produce millions of dollars in revenue while I was sick, but it also helped over, at the time, 300 people write, publish, promote, and become best-selling authors. So over the past two years, we've refined that process even further and again, when you look forward <clears throat> to answer your other question, um, one of my next books was called Multicast Marketing. It's about the idea of create your content once and distribute it everywhere. The next big book was called You Everywhere Now, which was about um, leveraging all the large distribution networks and being able to, say, create a live cast. So let's say, for example, if we were broadcasting this live, which right. we could do for free, people could be watching us, listening to us, practically anywhere in the world. It can be turned into a podcast, which it will be, both audio and video. It could be transcribed into a book. Mm -hmm. It could be turned into articles. It could be turned into any number of social media posts. And that's the idea of multicasting is create once, distribute everywhere. The idea behind You Everywhere Now is to be seen, heard, read, viewed on any device anywhere, any, any, any time. And then our most recent project, which is Publish and Profit, which is really about embodying all of those things in one place but leveraging one of the biggest and most powerful distribution networks today which is Amazon and really Apple um, they represent the fastest way to create a book which is a well-known package where you can declare who you are what you do who you do it for in a format that instantly gives you credibility authority and value so it was a lot of information at, at once yeah. but uh, I think I answered your question. No, you did really. Okay, so you just talked about three different books and programs. So there's always a business behind the book, which is, I, I heard you say that, but I want to make sure that that's clear. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I'm going to I want to go back. I want to backtrack sure. here. You were looking at potentially not surviving with cancer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was a very dire situation. Mm -hmm. And it's a question that I've often asked myself, and like when I've had loved ones pass away, it really brings it to the, the forefront of like, what are we leaving behind? And I thought of that book for my daughter, or what is it that I'm going to leave behind? And it sounds like you had that, at that time, you said, hey, this is my last chance. Mm -hmm. And between challenges with the treatments that you were getting, you, from your telephone, decided to go ahead and give your, your life's work, like everything that you knew that you wanted to pass on to that book but built a business behind it as well. Mm -hmm. So the book was like a business card or an entry point or a free giveaway or mm -hmm. a, a, a lead magnet to generate, to, to get people interested. And to me, it's legacy. And you mentioned like what you're gonna leave behind because what I love even when you talk about it and you're celebrating is not just the success of the book, but the 300 people that use what you shared with them to publish themselves and get their message out. So right. it was a huge extension. And I'm so proud of you and so mm -hmm. grateful that you've given so many people this. I like bringing Mike to you and connecting with you personally because he's sharing something that you can do. Because there's really yeah. no limitations to this. And as sick as you were, and I, I love that, I've got a similar story, I'm not gonna tell it now, but about someone being on their deathbed or, or just incapacitated and it required, they didn't have their old resources. So they were forced to do something different out of inspiration or desperation. So you can do this too. And here's what we're, we're gonna take a quick break. This is, uh, you're on with Mike Koenigs. This is Greatness Quest. I'm Trevor Crane. See you in just a couple minutes. All right, 
you're back watching Greatness Quest on the Whatever It Takes Network with Trevor Crane. This is Mike Koenigs, and we were just talking about the challenges he went through when he first came up with the, I guess, executed the concept of publishing his story <laughs> in any and every way possible, even in the dire circumstances of being on his deathbed when he was going through cancer treatments. Now, since that time, how many best-selling books? So, had? well, it turns out I've had seven, mm -hmm. and um, three of them I wrote and published while I was going through chemo treatment or treatment, but then... Uh, okay, all right, yeah. come on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, three, yeah. and now I'm embarrassed. Because, I mean, I've got my excuses for why I haven't published three books in the last... How long? Uh, and you so were going about through chemo. Three, through three to four months, yeah. So, so it's that's a book a month. Pretty close. During you going through your treatments. Yeah, because there's once you figure out the system, it's really... The, the, the thing you can't cheat is you can't... You know, a lot of people would live under the myth of the mistaken belief that you can't write a good book quickly. Right, right. And the reality is you can't fake experience quickly, okay? So... What they represented was, you know, decades worth of experience of mistakes, trials, and errors. But there's a way to, uh, you know, the content for a book, like a 120-page book, is about two and a half to four hours worth of interviewed content, plus some editorial and some additions. So if Go you on, have a on. system, say that again because you're yep. saying it quickly. I want to make sure they catch this. Yep. So a 200-page book, 120 page, 120 page, page book is two and a half to four hours worth of interviewed content that then can be edited and you know it, it would be added to I'm not saying that you just take a transcript and publish it as a book some people do that I think you've got to add some additional value but it's really about a half a day worth of content so most people if you sit them down and you give them a formula um, that allows them to ex express what they know and what they understand um, and extract their genius out of them it's entirely possible and probable that they can you know, get that interviewed out of them. You can interview yourself. So in our process, we teach it's prepare, which is understanding who you're writing the book for, what it should be called, how it should be packaged. Mm -hmm. There's perform, which mm -hmm. is performing your content. The third is publish. The fourth is promote. The fifth is profit. So the, there's a step-by-step -step process like anything, like learning how to drive a car. You know that you sit down, you put on your seatbelt, you start it up. You put your foot on the brake. You put your gear shift in reverse. You back when up you and you go forward. When you first get started, you're, you can't. You're all over the happen. place. Yeah, right, you don't right. coordinate. So, so your brain has to learn that there's in fact a process for writing a book. It's a scientific formula that once you learn it, you know my friend Brian Tracy's written over 70 books now. Now he's older than I am, but he regularly cranks out three to four a year, and. It's not that it's that much work. It's just that he's figured out how to leverage and use his time effectively and know that once you start to have a system, knowing what you're going to put in the book takes about 20 to 30 minutes. Getting it out of your head is another two and a half to four hours. And then there's 20 or so hours of real work involved that can either be outsourced and given to someone else. But the bottom line is you don't have to be a writer in order to be an author. And I think that's the other big myth is that you know, we call it the Ernest Hemingway excuse, which is believing you actually have to be a writer in order to be an author, or the Henry David throw, you've got to park yourself or disappear for three months and go into a cabin. Nothing could be further from the truth. Really, the best books are written in the midst of your busy life, because that's when you have the most to give and you're actively teaching and doing what you're going to be talking about anyway in your book, if you're living what your book is about. Well... I want to thank you because my sure. first book is called Greatness Quest. Your 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 formula inspired me, mm. and I, I created some blog episodes. Yep. So every week I would do a quick blog, and maybe my it was a video blog, and it was between five and ten minutes long. I had that transcribed, and we added more value, and that's my first book. So yep. that was all thanks to you, and it was done. It was such a huge value add for the people that follow me. And, that, and I felt like it was my greatness quest. Like my grandfather passed away uh, two years ago. And when he did, he wrote me his final letter. Like a, I was engaging with him when he was on his deathbed. Right. Literally. And he wrote me a letter. I asked him about his magic moments. Like what his life, looking back, was about. Because it was challenging when he was bedridden. Mm -hmm. And he, in that last letter, he wrote me, a, I found like a guidebook to greatness or living a great quality of life. And... It took me even, it was, I, I, I waited 
I waited to to write that story about him until unfortunately after he passed away yeah. it was Christmas morning at 3 a.m. I woke up thinking about that letter and how to change my life because I found patterns of like needing to hang out with the coolest people I could find because every memory that my grandfather gave me was about time he spent with amazing people not sucky people but amazing people right. about doing things he was passionate about and and I just I had to share that and that was my first video that I shared and it started Greatness Quest wow. and so but that is primarily I was inspired by you just letting me know so I think the first thing that I'm picking up here is that you have permission to tell your story and write your book and it's your responsibility my biggest regret is that I waited right. and it sounds like to a certain degree you may have been waiting mm -hmm. I mean you wrote three while you're going through your cancer treatment so yep. let's go to that real quickly and and I know that you're also going to give everybody a chance that's watching this uh, some kind of free gift so you can find out the the peas that might get I'll have you repeat those as well yep. but let's go back to cancer time like I know that a lot of things have changed in the last two years mm -hmm. What's the effect that that had on like what life is about and what you're going to do next? Because I know that there's been a lot of transitions for you. Sure. Well, I think the the biggest thing that happened is I really got clear on you know what I told myself is, uh, and I never thought I was going to die. I, that wasn't really something that entered in, but it was a possibility and something I I um, relegated control of. I, I gave up I'm control so, I of it. I love this yeah. because a lot of people that get. I've got cancer, automatically think I'm gonna die. So I just wanna acknowledge you for mm -hmm. that because I think everything starts with belief and that is True. huge. For yep. me, that's just, that makes, to me that actually tells me why you stuck, why you got through it. So sure. thank you for sharing that. Sure. That's, I don't think that that's a small thing. Yeah, well it's uh, it's something that I certainly watched because I, I asked a lot of nurses. My greatest information came from nurses, not doctors. So I, all, I asked all every nurse I ever had, what was it that um, if you look at people who've lived and died under your care, what was it that made them live? And what did, all, what did they all have in common? And some of them were, were nurses who had been doing what they'd been doing for 35 years. And the two biggest characteristics were they said, um, first of all, they went thermo on whatever the disease was. So they went hardcore after it and they didn't hesitate, didn't blink. They did everything they could all at once. So like if they needed a surgery, they went for the surgery. If they needed chemo, they went for the chemo. They yep. got aggressive with it rather than scared right. and didn't not or take Or started chickening out and, and listening to witch doctors and, and frou-frou. So you got to listen to, I believe, in everything, you know, my wife used to work for Deepak Chopra. I've done a lot of work in the, in the alternative and in the integrative care. Deepak Chopra said, do surgery, do chemo on this. You do not want to wait or you'll die. So we had, I fortunately had access to some incredible integrative doctors and out of the 11 that I spoke with, only one said only do alternative and that person ended up um, uh, having felony charges filed against him, by, not by me, but he was for malpractice. Oh my goodness, so okay. I didn't take advice from the wrong person in other words. Okay. Um, but the whole point was um, go in thermo. The second thing is um, they had a smile on their face every day. So I made it, you know, I, I prayed, I meditated every single day, and I just gave uh, thanks. And I, I was in a total state of gratitude, and I even shifted what I called it. I called it my gift, even while I was going through it. And what it did is it forced me to recognize and realize that my body was a beautiful vehicle, but it was temporary. And, you know, understanding the separation between your soul and your body and know that this is not who I am. Mm -hmm. And um, that it's just a temporary, beautiful vehicle. And so, what does that mean? <clears throat> well, what it ultimately means is um, no matter what's going on inside your body, it has nothing to do with who you are or what value you offer and provide. Yeah. And I think that was, uh, for me, an important mindset piece. So in terms of how that's affected going forward, um, I developed a strategy. I teach it now in our latest program. I call it my superpower exercise, and it's a means of teaching um, really identifying what your great superpowers are yeah. <clears throat> and I got clear on what those are and also what my fatal flaws were and when you get clear on what your superpowers and your fatal flaws are I believe that you experience a form of purification okay so hold on your yeah. you're Superman hero your Superman powers your superpowers your yeah. superpowers and then your Lex Luthor what you're not your fa fatal, fatal flaws fatal actually flaws. Lex Luthor was good at a lot of stuff okay fatal flaws are the things like for example some of my fatal flaws are I'm 
I am incapable of remembering dates. My brain just doesn't remember or care about them. I, I've never cared about holidays, special dates. They mean nothing, always have. Um, so it causes problems in relationships because for some so people on, that's hold, very important. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So hold on. Yeah, yeah. If, if dates aren't important, so then so holiday, what what is important? Then? Well, um, not that. I'll tell you what I'm. I'll tell you my yeah, fatal okay, flaws. Okay, please. <clears throat> Historically, I uh, believed that I had to be good at everything. So in doing so, I made commitments to people around my weaknesses, around my fatal flaws, which meant <clears throat> I was often or frequently over. Um, overtaxed, overworked, um, focusing on things I wasn't good at. Um, I would make commitments that I couldn't fulfill on. I made a lot of mistakes that way. Right. And, you know, your fatal flaws are things that people say about you behind your back um, that you're consistently failing at. Your superpowers are the things people say about you when you're around. They're also the things that you consistently do when you're in the zone and it's easy to give. So in the case of my superpowers, I've got a, I have five of them. So the bottom line was, I got clear on what I was, what I wasn't, and when I really, really became objective, that's when I saw my life with total clarity. I got clear on my life's purpose and what I was here for, even clearer than I'd ever had. And I made a vow that I would quit doing the things that I don't like to do, I'm not good at, never want to be good at, they're not in my DNA, and caused me pain and other people pain when I operated inside of those. So over the next year and a half or two years post-cancer. I established and built a lot of things. It took a lot of time, but one of the things I did do is I prepared my companies in such a way that they could be purchased by a publicly traded company. Right. And, and inside of that, go yeah, ahead. I'm sorry. Well, and so uh, we're celebrating, it's been a month, about a month About now, a month from the time we're recording this, yeah. That, uh, that Mike actually sold his company to a publicly traded company. And, and I remember when you shared this online, and you shared part of the same story about about what you're great at and what it, you're not great at and the decision to go ahead and stop doing the stuff that you suck at yep. and start doing and just I'll give yourself permission to do what you're awesome at, your, yeah. your superpower. Be Superman or be your superpower and then you set it up so that you could walk away. And I personally have driven several companies into the ground because I didn't face that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've had success, and I thought it was successful. And then when things went didn't go my way, sure, I fought and fought and fought. Yeah. And I mean, I can drive a company to bank bankruptcy. I'm not sure if you knew that, but I can do. I can show you how to do that. We all can do it. <laughs> so. Yeah, I could have too. I, you know, and and so yeah, I believe me, I understand. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so huge congratulations because that's awesome. And now this is freeing you up, I believe, mm -hmm. for the next stage of your life. So I want to go ahead and give everybody watching now like uh, sure. the, the, what your advice would be to them with the changes and challenges that you've gone through. Sure. And because I think it's very relevant. I'm so, again, I'm so proud of the fact when I saw you online sharing that you were making a stand and I didn't know you had that particular uh, superpower or fatal flaw that was unbeknownst to your client yeah to, to somebody who I was who, afraid to share it tell you the truth that, that's uh, part of it I think um, the fear we all have is that when we reveal what we think are our weaknesses that everyone already smells and detects uh, it's when you're clear you actually gain trust they don't run away from you Please so me. so getting when you are vulnerable and um, this isn't talking about stupid stuff that you know isn't helpful, you know. But um, but it's about getting clear. Um, it shows leadership. It shows courage. It does. And um, and I didn't do it for for anyone except for me and my family. But I know that I can serve better by being in my in my zone in my superpower status. And I think everyone who knew knew me was like, okay, you know what? I get it. I've had no one say, "Oh, you're turning your back on me. You're you're uh, you're running away, or, right, or right. you're abandoning me." Right. It's been exactly the opposite. It's like that's what I came to you for. I want more of that. It's sort of like now there's more of me so when you the and what they desire. To, and when you had the courage to go ahead and face that sure. in front of the world, because this is about one of your other books, "You Everywhere Now." You yeah. went ahead and said, "Okay, this part of my journey, I'm going to share." And turned it into a not a, well not that story but I mean your life now you embraced it with your clients and yep. future clients yep. and they celebrated you for it instead of 
Sure. Uh, what, what do you call it when, when Jesus fell on the cross? Crucified. Crucifixion, yeah. yeah. And, and that's a, I think that's an important aspect. Again, you have, to, you have to do it in such a way that it's not all about you. So what I like to present is, you know, I, I've, our, our whole business revolves around celebrating the success of our customers. Yeah. It's what we call hero worship. And um, inside of that, I like to say that our business and my life is a laboratory and I've just given people access to my own laboratory so you get to go on a journey with me as I go through self-discovery. And um, you know, I'm not saying that my way is the best way, I'm not saying my life is the best one as an example, but you know, I've been certainly willing to, to share my failures and my fears and even cancer. There was a time when I was terribly afraid to even share that because I was afraid, hey, my customers would want to abandon you know, ship. It's sort of like, well, if you're going to be dead, I'm not going to. I'm going to go find something else right now. It was sort of like, okay. So part of that was self-preservation. I thought, nah, screw it. I'm going to turn this into a journey and open up what this experience is, and hopefully prevent other people from going through what I went through, and also how to um, muster up and turn what could be a fatal experience into an opportunity. And if we all have people that we love and care about who are going through uh, life and death circumstances, if not ourselves. Half of all men end up getting cancer at some point in time in their life. 33% of all women do, statistically. So I don't know what the percentage of people are that are entrepreneurs, but it turns out there aren't great resources for entrepreneurs with cancer. Um, so one of the projects that I have on the queue for the future is Cancerpreneur. It's a, a way of going through the journey. And that'll be another gift and another project oh, that I'll amazing. do. So I think, again, the reason I bring that up is yeah. no matter what circumstance, whatever challenge you're going through, you can turn that into a means to connect with someone, uh, an ideal audience, and be able to guide them through the process. They'll gladly pay you for that as well. So interestingly, a huge, you know, my tribe now consists of a lot of people who have heard about my cancer story and have said, oh, and I love your products too. It's turned out that I've actually increased the size and the quality of my tribe and the relationships with them by being more heart-centered. Thank you so much for that. So that, that was awesome. a lot of information, but. No, we're do I think this has been great. So uh, Mike, any final words oh, yeah, to you people had advice. that are watching? And uh, sure. I'll give you clarity. Uh, the people that are watching, might, they might have a job. They might, sure. they might be working someplace and they need to know how what you're talking about right now, actually, how can they use it and, and relate yes. to it and, and take advantage of their vulnerability and be a disruptosaurus? And like we talked also about, the, you know, what's your advice to them? And, and they might sure. be an entrepreneur or a business owner mm -hmm. that's ready to take it to the next level. And how can we go ahead and use what you've got or your insight? And sure. like Well, here's, I think, the gift. I'll start with the gift and then work backwards be because the, it's com combined. I would say for you, um, I'd love to give you a gift, which is the most recent book. It's called Publish and Profit. So if you go to publishandprofit.com slash greatness, you can get a copy of the book for free there. And my advice is this. I think right now is the greatest time to share your message with the world, whether you are an employee, whether you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to be a part-time or a full-time entrepreneur and gain control over your own destiny and be able to achieve a higher degree of financial freedom in your life. It turns out, in my opinion, the most effective way to do that is to write a book or learn the skills to write books with or for other people. Um, many of the people that we've taught how to write books end up becoming high-paid consultants, and they're charging between six and twenty thousand dollars to do that. I love those stories, and we're not talking about this is not age specific because I know that some no, people say, "Well, I've got, I can't do that. This is not for me." We have a nine-year-old girl, Abby Richter. She wrote four books in three months, so no nine one has an excuse, old. right? How and many? Hold on. How yeah, many books? Four books in three months. Okay, so these statistics, like she, they're bestsellers. Rattle, you say this stuff so fast, and I'm like, yeah. hold on. It's pretty impressive. That is some impressive. And then Joni Wilson is her name, 79 years old, um, also wrote a book, and she's a vocal coach. So um, Abby Richter wrote her books about rescue pets, rescue animals, right. because her parents are veterinarians. I bought her book. Yep. And so, and we have people from every age group, many, many countries. Some of them do multiple languages in every walk of life imaginable. And not only do we teach you how to write the book and publish the book and become a bestseller, but also how to turn either the book into a business so you can wrap an existing business into a book or turn a book into a business and use it as a way to, to generate 
uh, a tribe, get attention, build a list, create products. And the, what's important is we've helped over 500 people do it with this formula. It works like crazy. Right. I would say if I had a legacy to leave behind, if I were to pass right now, mm -hmm. I'd say, you know, I, I say this to my wife all the time that um, we already won. You know, I, I can I can pass right now and know that I've helped a lot of people feed their families, make a difference, yeah. um, create a better future for themselves. And I do believe that the value, the quality of our lives on this planet is dependent on the number and qu the quantity of entrepreneurs mm. because it's a means to uh, take care of yourself with dignity, feed your families, um, get immediate feedback and support other people and whatever that is, whether you're a nutritionist, you're in health, fitness, um, financial services, or whatever it may be. And uh, a, a book is a packaged means of saying, here's who I am, here's what I do, here's what I do it for, and when you follow me on a journey together, I will take you to where you want to go. And it will—it's your—it's your ticket past the velvet rope right. into a, into VIP status to elevate your your uh, gravitas, your authority, and your expertise expertise in a way that people accept it. And again, a book isn't just a book; it can be an audio book, it can be videos, it can be a podcast, it can be any any Which format. Is the, you can. Your other book, the uh, the multi multicast marketing. Multicast yeah. marketing. So. What you're going to get in publish and profit then is the how to's. And yep. I actually have the book. I have it in ebook form, and it's phenomenal. And it shows you exactly what to do with the, it because it doesn't leave out that second part, which is so important to me profit. Because yep. I think money is an exchange. You know, how much money you have in the bank is, is a matter of how much value that you have added to other people. Yep. And so if you don't have as, as much in your bank account as you want, then the key here, and what I love about the whole idea of publishing your story, whatever your story is, or what you're great at, or what you believe in, is that you get to add more value to others. That's right. And it's a, it's a you talk about the velvet But rope people bring you to bed and give you permission to do that. That's the beauty of having a book, is they bring you to bed, <laughs> or if you're, as in Trevor's case, he's reading the book on his phone or his iPad or Kindle, um, you're an arm length away. And your audiobook could be listened to in a car or on an iPod. So and you, we can, and we live in a time where technology is not, we're soon going to have the watch. We'll be able to watch it watch your book listen yeah. to your book right That's here right. and I mean when I did get, when you offered your book I within 20 seconds of you making the offer I was reading your book yep and that's what we have the opportunity to yeah. do. And um, you know, you, you, you know, everywhere now. That's the big opportunity. So there's a bunch that Mike can share with you. It's Mike Koenigs. Uh, to follow you on Twitter is yep. it's just Mike Koenigs. It's K-O-E-N-I-G-S. You can do a search Facebook. It's just slash K-O-E-N-I-G-S Koenigs. And then my email is Mike Koenigs at gmail.com. You can send me an email and you know let me know how you're using the book and, and the resources in it to grow your business and, and improve your, your the quality of your life. Well, and what we're, I also want to do with you, Mike, is offer everybody who's watching this a chance to actually get the training that goes along with this. Sure. So if anybody opts in and they, they get your free book, can we yep. do something where we do offer them a webinar and teach that's, them and let you come It's actually alive? in there right there. So if you just go to publishandprofit.com slash greatness, you're auto automatically going to get the first video in a training series in addition to the book and then be invited to a webinar. So it's, it's really easy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I look forward to spending more time with you, working with you in the future. Good. And uh, thank you for being here. It's my pleasure. Uh, you're watching Greatness Quest on the Whatever It Takes Network. I'm Trevor Crane. This is Mike Koenigs. And can't wait to see you next week. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.